The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We have had some volatility. We had a 220-point drop in the in the gold yesterday and a $4 drop in uh, silver. So we're starting to get some great volatility in here. But what we need to do is to think about, you know, what we're going to be looking at uh, over these next couple of days. And frankly, I think we've got something it's going to be huge. I, I really don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I think the fact that we've had this incredible volatility in gold and silver could mean a lot. And gold stopped you know, pretty close to uh, major support, which was down there at uh, 1840. And also the silver stopped uh, pretty close to where it should have stopped at around 25 and change. And that was uh, almost, well, it was $5.00 down from the high so that's a that's a those are huge moves folks so that's a good thing now let's let's move on and we have shane smolian as our guest today but let's talk just a little bit about the t-bonds because if you'll remember yesterday let's do this in history so we can get an idea all righty let's take a look here and you'll see that this is the bonds we were looking for these to come in around 99 <laughs> Let's try it again, Cowboy. 179.18 is what we were looking at. The low was 179.04. Now, you'll see that's a very important 61% retracer. Here We had a rally from that point, folks. All we did was we rallied up to the 79. Exactly 180 is the exact number. Let me get this chart up here, folks. Just a second here. There we go. So here's... You'll see the high we made up there at that 133. You don't even see that. This was a secondary high at 182. 183 is where all the resistance came in. We dropped five handles. Here's what we've done as of yesterday. You notice we came down to that number. Then we rallied up to 180, uh, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.4. 180.04. I can't even read these prices. They're so small. 180.04, and then we started down. This looks like we're going to complete a... ABCD pattern down at the 177.10 uh, uh, level. That's a that it's really at well 177.11, 1.618. They're double numbers in there. So the only thing that would keep this from doing that would be a move back above 179.20, uh, and that's a full point from where we are trading right here this morning. So the bonds still look negative. I think that uh, those of you that took advantage of that should be uh, should be happy, so we'll see what happens. I've had several que questions about the uh, stock market because of the way that gold acted and the way that the uh, other, you know the other markets didn't do very much. Folks, all all the all they did in the gold market was uh, you know have a, a really severe correction, as near as I can tell. The open interest dropped again uh, yesterday, which means that uh, oh no, that's not right. The gold boy, I'm really stum stumbling here today. Just uh, hold on one second. Take a deep breath. All right, let's move on to just one thing. The open interest in gold actually increased yesterday. And that means when the big move is down and you've got people coming in, that means new shorts came in the market. This is my personal uh, two cents worth. The fact that we stopped and rallied $70 uh, an ounce in just a matter of a very short period of time, what I would be expecting is if gold can get above the um, – one, 1970 that would tell us that that is a major bottom down in here is just a shake out of week longs and then we're probably going to get ready to go higher so that's my two cents worth the reason why i'm talking about that level of 179.70 is because last night we rallied up exactly to the tick at uh, 1955, which was the at 1955, which was the exact 382 of that whole breakdown. 
So that's the key to uh, you know what we're looking at, uh, at least here this morning. <laughs> I need something more than coffee, Duffy. Uh, actually, folks, what happened is I've most of you know that I've, I've had these allergies because of the Palo Verde tree, and oh, did they hit me yesterday? Oh my goodness, I I, uh, I had a really rough time, and I the doctor gave me some stuff to uh, clear me up, so I'm feeling a little bit better. Whether that's going to be it, um, I don't know uh, if it's a shake out or not uh, z but i believe you know if we it, the, the key for me z is if we get above that 1970 that's going to be a hundred dollars off the bottom uh you know that's uh, three harmonic numbers up so if we get above that then there's a chance and the way you should handle it you know if you're still hey, hey look long term if you're bullish in gold you put your hands in your pocket and wait because i folks let, let's just let's just go through this for just a second just to the other day, I brought you to your attention uh, something from Jim Flanagan from uh, the GAN educators over there. And uh, what? Well, the 1960. Uh, I believe it's. Uh, I believe the exact number is 1954. Uh, uh, Duffy on the on the gold. So that's uh, what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, I know, Mr. Z, you're often wrong, but never in doubt. And we respect all your work because you do a lot. Let's take a look at what happened to gold back in uh, 1978. We had that big move up there to 250. That's That was from the low that it made. Uh, I believe it was down around 120 or something. But then in uh, 1978, we went from um, 170, <clears throat> 170 up to 250 80 now that's a you'd look on a percent basis that's a huge percent that's an 80 percent move in gold so uh, then we backed off you see how quickly we backed off this is what i'd like to see is to to take a a couple of months well a couple of weeks uh five you know say three to five weeks for the gold to make that because we've been we've been straight up folks I mean, you know, we really have. You know, we've had days, you know, we have $100, you know, almost one day. And to, for it to drop that much is no big deal. That's just shaking the, that's just shaking the tree. So the way, you, the way that I look at trend is if you can get that thing above, let's see. You know, the problem is when I'm doing this show, I can't see the prices. So let me check the, the price of the gold right now and see where we are. And uh, let's see where we are here. Oh, dear. Now, where are you, gold? Just a second here, window tile vertical. This is... Okay, and we are trading at uh, 1953 is where we're trading. Uh, I think that the high that we made in that in that rally got up to 1957. So the key is to watch uh, if we get about this, you know, 1961, 1970 level. That's telling you that that was probably nothing more than a uh, you know a uh, move up, a quick move up, and. And I don't know if that's the case or not, but that it has to tell you that that's what's going to happen. On the on the downside, let's just do something quickly. Hold hold on just a second. We'll just get this up here so we can. You're asking me a question now. This is acting really bullish. Let me let me give you my two cents worth looking at a short term. Okay. All right. What we're going to do is I'm going to look at it on a two minute basis. We made that low down there at 1874. We rallied all the way up to 1957. Okay, look where we backed off to. We backed off to the exact 382 retracement in 1926. That's telling you that this thing could be bullish. But the key is you got to get it above that 1970, 1961, 1970 level. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're back, and we're going to talk just a tiny bit here about uh, natural gas because I believe that we have a nice correction going here, and we have been preparing for that. And if we take a quick look at this, this looks uh, really interesting, folks. You can see uh, the double bottom that we had down there at that one uh, one one five. 1.5 area, then we had a big rally up to 1.25. Now we're pulling back, and I believe we're going to make a 38% retracement there at uh, $2 even. So watch that very closely for two reasons. The main reason is this is the 382 retracement, and the secondary reason is that it is also exactly the same as the correction that we had between June 10th and June 22nd. Count the number of days. From the time we made that, that first high back on June 10th down to the 22nd, that's 12 days. So we should come down 12 days from the highs. And we topped here at the 10th, uh, it should bring us right down to about the 20, 12, see, that was the uh, 10th. Bring us down to around the 22nd, I believe, of August. That would be equal in time from that last correction that we made. And that's then, then you have time and price together, folks. And that gives you your really, uh, really good spot. And that's what you're looking at. If you remember when we were talking about the gold and the silver over the last few days, we've seen these big drops in open interest, and we sort of alerted you to that fact. The $64 question is, is this a major top in the gold? Or is is it just a correction? And I think we're just in a corrective mode. But you know, if we don't get above 1971 here or 1970 in gold, uh, this could be it. Could, we could be looking at a major top. We we just don't know. But you know, the good part of it, boys and girls, nobody else does either. That's what we're trying to look at. Okay, if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648, and then we will uh, be happy to answer it for you if we can. I've got a chart here on the NASDAQ that I wanted to share with you because it's doing pretty much the same thing that we're looking at uh, when the gold was making its move. And that's going to be the key, in my opinion, is if the stock market is going to move, is what happens with the NASDAQ during this time. And that's my 
that's my focus that I wanted to see. And here we have it up here. So we can take a look at it. Now, this is an hourly chart that we're looking at here in the uh, NASDAQ. You'll notice the highs we made up there at 11,280. Uh, maybe we've got a caller coming in. Um, yep, Stan Harley, uh, Mr. Z has just alerted us that Stan Harley had a high due today. And uh, we, in fact, I got that marked on my calendar, and I was going to get Stan on the line today, but uh, I, I was unable to because we have Shane as our guest. So that that could be it. Maybe it was maybe the high was yesterday because you know the, I don't know if the Dow Jones made a new high uh, because we dropped uh, what 500 points in the Dow from three up three something to down uh, 150, like almost 500 points. But let me get through this Nasdaq because this is the one that's leading the pack. We made the high up to 11,200. That was back on August the 6th. We re retested it very closely on August the 7th. Then we had a big break into August 7th. Then we had the rally. The rally was nothing more than a 38% rally. Uh, well, it was a little bit more, right? almost 50%. Then we make a big ABCD down on, on, uh, on Monday. All right. Then we rally on Tuesday. Look where we stopped yesterday. Folks, in the NASDAQ, we stopped exactly at the 61% retracement. We took out the highs of Sunday night, and then we break down, and we stopped just a little above the 78% level. So this is still positive. What I suggested uh, when I did the video last night is to watch the price. I I, I think it was 11000 um just a little, I think it was 11,050 is what I was looking at for a rally in the uh, in the NASDAQ. I don't know if the NASDAQ has hit that yet or not. So if you folks would be so kind, let me do it myself. Let me put the prices up so I'm able to, uh, to see what we're looking at. Oh, dear, I hit the wrong button. You know, oh, dear. Okay, let me give me one. Let me take a quick look at this NASDAQ because I think it's, I think it's important to see if it's doing these numbers the way we'd like to. And here it comes. We see, oh, my goodness, this thing looks terrible. This is, uh, uh, hold on just one second here. Uh, wow, see, last night this thing didn't even do anything. Let's get this up here so we can uh, we can see it. Oh, yeah, this is beginning to look really nasty. Hold on a second here so we can see it in a bigger format. All right, now I can bring it up and take a look at it. Hold on here one second. You'll be able to see here, uh, one second, there we go. This is where we are. You'll see it's sort of been in a downtrend. We, we've not even made a 382 rally of that move, folks. That number, uh, how close did we come? 11,000 is around 11,000. Watch 11,050. That's the that's the key move. But the fact that this thing is rolling over, these are the leaders, folks. These are these these are these 10 stocks that have been running. Well, there's a few, probably a few more, but you know those are those are the big ones. You know, and they're beginning to roll over. So you got to pay attention to that because if, you know the Dow's not going to be able. 30 stocks is not going to be able to keep the market up. That's uh, that's two cents worth, of course, and if you pay more than two cents, you're overpriced. Okay, uh, what are we doing in the gold? We're trading. We got up to uh, 19. What was our high here so far in the last few minutes? We got up to 19.54, and we're down about three bucks from there. So we'll see if that means anything. A question about the U.S. dollar. The the U.S. dollar has held the low at uh, 92.50 so far, but uh, it hasn't rallied very much. That could be a sign that we're looking at something a whole lot uh, more uh, disastrous in the U.S. dollar. And let's get this chart up because so far you're seeing a five-day rally that has done nothing. And this is the understatement of the year. Get this up here to take a look at it. You'll see uh, we had a five-day rally. We couldn't even make an ABCD up to 94.20. We're trading at 93.33, and below 92.40 would really be nasty, especially after a five-day rally like that. So the the uh, I see the euro is a little bit stronger this morning, and uh, maybe that'll push the gold up. One other one other one I want to remind you of, and that is the uh, the in the cryptocurrency uh, area. If you'll take a look here, we had a move up to 12,000. Let's get this up so you all folks can see it. And then uh, we backed off a little bit. But you'll see here that level of 12,000 is starting to look like some pretty uh, severe uh, resistance. That's also a 78% level of that whole old high, you know, way back in the middle of uh, spring. So uh, anything above 12,000, closing above 12,000 now, 
would really get the Bitcoin going. Folks, this was not this was not a bubble. They they called it a bubble, and we went to nineteen thousand nine hundred. We're down to three thousand three hundred, I believe, and then we've rallied all the way back to twelve thousand. That's acting like a market. That's that's not a that's not a a, a bubble. And if you looked at it on a log scale. That correction between 19,000 and 3,000 was nothing more than a normal correction when a, when you figure this, the the coins were you know priced at roughly $100 when they first started. So that's it. So we'll see. Well, we got a break coming up. We'll have Shane Smolian on. I'm sure he'll give us a little talk about what's going on with our friend the uh, the virus. So we'll keep a close eye on that. And then the, on Thursday and Friday, I don't believe we have anyone. Uh, schedule, but I'm trying to get uh, Al Larson from Money Time. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I believe we have Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com on the line. Shane, are you there? Good morning, Larry. How are you? I am under the influence of the Palo Verde attack, but I'm on some medication that is uh, a little bit, it helps me a lot. I can breathe better, but uh, boy, it makes me uh, a little tired sometimes. But anyway, I'll, I'll be fine in a day or two. Uh, Shane, we've got a question from uh, one of our listeners, and that is, 
is there a potential for a top in the stock market around this time? And the reason why he asked that is because Stan Harley, who we have on as a guest, uh, has been looking at this date of August the 12th for a long time. So that's the question. Go ahead with the show, and if you can answer it, fine. Other than that, we'll uh, keep on moving. So please uh, take the mic and go ahead. Well, first of all, I'd like well, I'd like to say that Stan Harley is a fine forecaster, as everyone knows. So uh, I would I would take what he says, first of all, seriously. Uh, he's very good at what he does. Uh, well, the main thing here is that we are um, mid-month. We're approaching uh, a peak in, in what I'm tracking with the Astro and the different cycles, and that's coming up around the 16th. Um, it's possible that it, it's topping now, and we did hit an RSI uh, on that S&P uh, so it was like 87.5 on the five day, and it, and and that's you know when you get when you get in a it starts climbing the wall like it is so, sometimes that RSI can stay elevated. But what what concerns me is that you had that wide ranging bar yesterday falling, and I'll get into that. On I have some intraday transits to talk about with that, but it's it's possible the Fed juice is still rising. So right now I'm just kind of in a flat position right now. I'm just I'm just sitting on the sideline right now watching this. Uh, but it's possible. I mean, it's it's possible that that could have topped out, and uh, once we hit that mid month, it could it could start to roll. But it's not going to do that much to the downside until the Fed juice can turn down. So right now, the Fed juice is still pointing up. So it, yes, it's possible. It's possible. Okay. Okay. So, and we'll get to the S and P in a little bit. But this is we'll start out with our friend, the COVID. Uh, these are the countries that have tested. Uh, that, that are testing. So right now, the United States is in third place, and this number this can change over time. Um, Australia is number one, the United Kingdom is two, and we're three. And Australia is high right now because they've had uh, a huge outbreak uh, in recent weeks with the COVID. So I mean, we're still very high, obviously. If you look down here, I don't know if you remember, but in the beginning, everyone everyone was saying, "Oh, South Korea, look, they're so advanced." Well, look where South Korea is now uh, compared to the top three countries here. So United States. Uh, Australia, United Kingdom, and United States, and Portugal is up there too. Uh, but those are the top countries testing. Now, this was a transit coming up here that I had forecasted out. I talked about this is my COVID transit uh, that tracks the shutdown energy on the on the planet. And I, I had it reaching a peak around August the 5th to the 6th. Uh, and then and right around May the 20th, that's when the number of cases started to increase again. Uh, and we started to have this increase of energy. So according to this, we've passed uh, a sh like a short term peak in terms of COVID. So things should start getting better according to this. Uh, I'm just going to show you two graphs here. This was last week when I showed you the biweekly change in COVID. Uh, we saw multiple outbreaks across the, the, the world. Um, and I'm going to flip to this week's chart so you can see the difference. If you flip back and forth, you see how that number has dropped off radically. You see that? Uh, you had the red. You had a bunch of this red out here in China, Australia, and now this week it's dropping. So that that kind of goes along with that graph I showed you that we we may have been at a second peak already in this COVID. Um, so that's good. Um, this is a biweekly change in confirmed cases in the United States, um, and we're we're plummeting. So that's good news too. So it it, it may be that the United States already hit uh, the second peak. And we're on the way down, which is a good thing because schools are opening. Uh, so that's good. Um, this is a snapshot here. We got 5 million cases, uh, 162,000 uh, deaths, 407 deaths, uh, 1545 cases per people. So that's a very low number. That's around 1%. So it's really not, it's not, you know, it, it makes, if you listen to watch the media, you would think that, you know, half the country is dying or something, but it, it's, it's relatively low. Now, a lot of these people have it and they're asymptomatic, but you know, it, that's, these, these are good numbers. These are good numbers are coming in. This is the excessive deaths. I talked about this before, uh, this, you go back here to 2018, this is the flu and, uh, you go here, this is a moving average of when, when you have like an outbreak or a natural disaster, this excessive deaths will go above what's expected. You can see now that we had this rise and we're kind of we're actually almost right back down to the expected death line, which is a good sign. So relative to where we should be, that's good. So this is all good news. Um, I track uh, this Corona cases per, versus time. This is the percent positive. Like, so I do it as a percent. And, be, and you have to do it this way because you're testing more people. Uh, if you do it this way, you had a peak in uh, April 11th. 
Uh, you had a low around uh, June the 16th. Uh, and then there was a little sub peak here in July where you had 8.8% tested positive. And now we're down to 7.6%. So it appears that we are now uh, rolling down on this second wave. And this is how this is how pandemics happen. They, they roll in waves. So you have your first wave, your second wave. And um, so if, if this goes to plan, I have the next peak of this coming in November. So I, I'll have to look at the low. There's a low coming in in between now and November, but I'll, I'll tell the newsletter subscribers about that. I talk about this in the newsletter so everybody can see this. So interesting to watch. Uh, it's fascinating. They canceled the big, I don't know if Larry, you're a big sports fan. Uh, the big, the big 10 canceled uh, football yesterday. And the, I think the PAC 12 also. So, um, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see if football actually happens college football this year. Shane, I'll, I will be able to live without football, baseball, hockey, you know, all the rest of the yeah. stuff. So I'm okay, but thanks okay. for asking. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and, and then no. some of these schools, I can think of the SEC, you know, they, they really love the football. So, you know, you can imagine it's, it's a tough decision, but uh, this is the death. So you can see the deaths are, this is a lagging indicator behind the last one I showed you, but they're, they're modestly, you know, they're coming off the lows here and nothing where we were back in April or May. So, I mean, these are good signs. I mean, this is good. So I think that there's a, you know, there's a chance that we're rolling back. And then uh, one of the interesting things too, I'll go quickly back to this. If you look at Sweden, Sweden has been very low on these numbers. They didn't even have a lockdown. Um, but one of the things that pe people point out about other countries in the United States is that even though they didn't have a lockdown, these, these people in other countries follow the, di the directions of the government. And so like when the government tells them to go inside or there's these air sirens to go off, they go inside. The United States, everyone's on the beach having a party. So that, I mean, that's part of the biggest difference here is that the people in a lot of these other countries, they follow a lot closer. So just something to point out. So the, it's, a, it's a complex issue. It's not, it's not very clear. Um, now, this is the fear and greed index. So we hit 74 yesterday. Uh, we're at 71 now after that little sell-off. Uh, and this is getting up there now. So we've had, um, you know, we've had this fear and greed index went all the way up here in the beginning of the year. Uh, it fell down near these March lows here. And look how far up we've come now. We've actually come up a pretty good distance here. Um, we are getting up to a level here that is, the sentiment is very high. Now, for me, it's tough when I look at this because the cycles versus the Fed, they, they, they can be in conflict, which is what's going on right now. So uh, the Fed juice is in a buy, but you know, mid-month we could have some topping action coming in. Okay, we're with Shane Smolian. We'll be back after a few words from our sponsor. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com, on the line. You want to continue, my friend? Sure. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, I'm Shane Smolian, and I run a, a, a newsletter over at WolfTraderFutures.com. And uh, we also track the metals. So I, I talk a lot about the S&P, but the metals is, is a mark, markets that we track. We track uh, copper, silver, gold, and platinum. Uh, and recently we had a pretty good uh, trade there on gold. We had an advantage here to the upside. That's this this green line right here. You can see this. Now, one of the things I do, Larry, is I, I, I overlay the Fed juice on top of the uh, astro indicators, which I call the cat signal. The cat signal is a combination. It's a combined astro uh, cycles and transits. Uh, it's multiple transits combined. And that's, these are the purple arrows here. So uh, the first thing that I do is I look for the Fed use, which was in a buy. And then I look at this Astro and you can see it tracked gold very well. In 8.1, it had this buy. Uh, 8.7, it had that top. And then it's coming, it's projecting a lower around the 14th. So this has been tracking gold beautifully. Uh, these numbers are published around the first of the month. This is not stuff that I put in later. This is all pre-published before the you know this happens but you got to combine a little bit of everything you got to put the fed in there you got to put the the astro and i also look at the rsi i optimize it and i know that we know that on this recent behavior of gold when it hits 96 it tends to be at a high so when it hit 95 the day before that i was i was clean, clean out of that uh and it it just it dropped off right after that so i do a lot of fine tuning in addition to just the astro i don't think you can just do one system and close your eyes and go with it. you really have to pay attention to the tape uh this is a side-by-side -side comparison of gold versus uh, this signal and you can see this is the cat signal this is the the, the purple one here uh, and this is in the newsletter uh and like i said this is pre-published so this this was out at, on the first of the month so this was all ahead of time you know, and it worked out really well this month. It doesn't always look this clean. I mean, this is a really clean chart. I mean, it looks like it literally is tracing out what happened uh, with the market. But when the markets get emotional like this, it tends to to do that. So um, silver had a very similar chart. We also had a position on that. Um, we had two of them, actually. We had one in the beginning and then one here. Uh, and, and then once again, that cat signal traced it out almost like perfectly. I mean, you can see here, it just, it traced it out to that peak. This was a Sunday on eight, nine, and then it just collapsed after that. So I think when you use the Astro in combination with the Fed juice, and by the way, guys, the Fed juice is still in a buy. So the Fed juice really likes, still likes gold and silver. So I don't think all hope is lost, but I'm not necessarily like a gold bug where I think, you know, gold is the answer to every problem in the world. I just, I just kind of follow the, the ebb and flow of the energy on it. So, all right. So this is an intraday chart here. So I just wanted to show you that this Astro stuff works on the intraday too. This was yesterday. 
Um, this is right around 2.20 p.m. This is the letter A, and then B was right around uh, 3.30, right when that VP announcement was made, uh, and that was the high and the low. And then you can see that the market actually, the market actually um, sold off exactly to those points. It actually went a little bit lower, uh, but that's that's an intraday chart of the Astro, and uh, so that's it's super interesting how you can do this stuff intraday. Here here they are side by side here. This is yesterday intraday, um, and I'm going to give you guys the time today that's supposed to peak uh, if we get to that slide. Uh, but you can see point A here. This was around 2.23. This was around uh, 3.30. Uh, so it picked up that decline uh, in the market. These these are now I put these transits. I put it on the the Wall Street on the actually on Wall Street. So the mid heavens pointing right above Wall Street. So I can use these faster moving aspects like the mid heaven and the ascendant. And this was off by about 10 minutes, but it still played out overnight. I was considering a long position last night around, because I sat out because there was a bad transit with the VP thing. It didn't look good at the close. So I was like out. So then I said, well, maybe around 10, 20, somewhere around there, there could be a, a position into there. So uh, this was last night. OK, this is transits overnight. Um, you can see these are the peaks and then it should go down into there. And uh, the market pretty much followed followed suit with that. Um, it followed those points almost exactly. Uh, the low, came, I think it came in about 10 minutes early. Uh, but for those of you who are subscribers, I did send this out last night. I, you know, I said, look, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe getting a long position in around um, Around 10, 10, 20, somewhere around there, 10, 30, 10, 25. It actually, like I said, it turned a little bit early, but this stuff was pre-published ahead of time. Uh, and the mark you can see here, if you look at letter A, it tracks it here. Letter B here, it tracks that high there. And then the letter C, that was actually the low, and that should have been the low, uh, and it was. Uh, it was within, within about 10 minutes. Now, there's other factors going on that I don't like right now. I don't like the fact that it made that wide-ranging bar on the four-hour chart down yesterday. Uh, I don't think the market liked that VP pick. Uh, it, it got leaked out early, uh, and and also we're just we're at very extreme values right now. So I'm just I'm I'm very cautious right now with I'm just being very cautious with the long side because I want to see uh, how this market reacts. But this is just to show that even on an intraday level, this Astro stuff works. I mean, I just showed you gold up here. You know, this this is on a this is on a daily level, right? This is on weeks at a time. But you can even like I said here, you could even zoom in. Uh, to a minute by minute basis. If you know the midheaven, the mid like in astrology, the sun is the day, the moon is the hour, the midheaven is the minute. If you know the location of where you are, you, your midheaven can point right above, and you can you can get these turns uh, pretty close. Now I don't really dabble too much into this intraday stuff because it can drive you crazy. There's a lot of noise in the market, uh, but when things get emotional, sometimes it can give you some clues. So this is why I was just looking to, into this last night. Uh, so. This is going to be today's uh, transit. So for those of you who are watching, uh, it's saying that we should have a peak somewhere around 109 today p.m. Uh, so we'll see. This was running about, I think it was about 10 minutes behind. So it would probably come closer to one if, if this follows suit today. But uh, so today, like and we're starting out positive. So this was the, the low last night. Um, the low was last night. And like I said, it's peaking today around 109 p.m. So, you know, we'll see if that that actually plays out. Uh, this is the S and P on the daily. Um, you can see there's a lot. You know, we're, the Fed uses in a buy since the 27th of July, and that is the dominant. That's the dominant factor. This Fed use has has had tremendous tremendous success during the whole COVID crisis. It, it held up the whole time, and so this is still in a buy. It's still in a pretty clean buy, and so the market's it, it, until that turns down, the market's going to have a hard time going down. And we have that, and we have three of these major astro indicators pointing up right now okay uh, i've got the cat the planter speed index and the general combined transits now the general combined transits is is very similar this blue one is very similar to the chart i just showed you it's like an intraday bradley type of a deal uh this rsi up here hit 87.5 now that's kind of an extreme value for the s p 93 was the the previous one here uh in june so this is the second highest rsi of this whole rally uh, and so that didn't concern me as much, but when it came off hard like that intraday, I got a little more concerned because if the market turns off of these high RSIs, that can be a top. So we got to be real careful about that. That happened with with copper too. Copper was running straight up, and it and it, and it, the RSI was climbing, 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 and then once it dropped, 
that was it for copper. So it kind of went sideways into that consolidation period. So I'm watching this with interest right now. I, I do feel a little cautious about this um, because we have all of these potential uh, sell signals coming in and they look very threatening there with those arrows. But uh, again, it's the battle here between the Fed and the Astros. So these two together really have to be in alignment for me to feel like um, we're going to have some type of an advantage. So right now, just sitting on the side, possible top. It is possible. Okay, folks, we'll be right back. Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We have the TheWolfTrader.com, Shane Smolian as our guest. We have a question for you, Shane, and that is uh, we have heard about these three big um, retrogrades coming up with the outer planets. Are you? Does that factor into the things you're looking at? I mean, I I, I look at retrogrades sometimes. If uh, you know, I look. I it, it de retrogrades can definitely turn markets. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there's there's substantial research on that topic. I really care more about Mercury, Venus, Mars when they make stations. But no doubt the outer planets can affect it, including the trans-Neptunians. They can affect tops. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but really, when Venus goes retrograde and direct, that's really important. And Mars Mars affects gold dramatically. And Mars is about to go retrograde coming up in September. And I talk about, I'll talk about that. I have a, a, a Uranian astrology newsletter, which I talk about the details of that in, too. 
Uh, but yes, retrogrades can affect, there's no doubt about it, they can be turning points. Okay, you want to tell the folks how they can reach you? Sure. Uh, you can. I'm Shane Smolian. For those of you who turned in late, uh, thanks for watching today, uh, joining us. Uh, you can reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com or www.WolfTraderFutures.com. Uh, we publish six newsletters. I think I'm reaching my capacity here for the near term. <laughs> uh, we have you think so? the S&P 500, so? <laughs> which is very popular. Uh, metals, also very popular. Energy, um, currencies, popular. Uh, cryptocurrencies, and then the Uranian newsletter. A lot of people sign up for that right away. I was happy to see that. Uh, this is just where we talk about astrology. For, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to separate it because in the newsletter, some p people just want to know about the S&P. They don't necessarily care about the charts and all that. So if you want to know about the charts, particularly the presidential race, I mean, this is interesting. This happened yesterday. We now know the vice presidential candidate. Uh, so I was looking at uh, the different charts and how they affect the markets. So we discuss all that stuff there. If you're an astrology techie, that's where you would really want to go. But um, each of these has a, a, a daily update. Uh, so if you on the, on the website, you'll get a daily update. You'll get Fed juice. I have Fed juice on uh, multiple markets. It's not just the S&P. So you can check that out. Thank you, my friend. We'll have you on again soon. Thank you. Have Larry. a great day, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. <laughs>